Do you want to know how to set up a children's picture book in PowerPoint in a quick and easy way? Then you've come to the right place. Stick around. Hey everybody, it's Keith Wheeler here. And today we're going to talk about how to create a children's picture book using PowerPoint. Now, if you want to get all the hints, tips, and tricks on how to make self-publishing a little bit easier to navigate, then make sure that you subscribe to this channel and you hit the bell icon so you get alerted each and every time I put out new content. So without further ado, I'm going to switch the screen around and we're going to get started. So the first thing I've done is I have gone into PowerPoint and I'm going to select a blank presentation. Now I know that the book I want to make is going to be eight and a half by eight and a half inches. So the first thing to do is go to design, go to your slide size, and I'm going to go down to custom. I'm going to make this eight and a half by eight and a half. And then I'm going to select ensure fit just to make sure that everything fits nicely on my screen. Now, I don't need any of this information, so I'm going to delete all that. So now I have a blank screen. Now this first page is going to be my title page and then I'm going to create a new slide. This is going to be my copyright page. And then my book is called My Buddy Knows Letters and the first thing that you do is you get introduced to my buddy. And so that's going to be that page. Now anytime you make a book, whether it's a children's book or any kind of book, Traditionally, what you want to do is you want your first page of your book to be on the right-hand side, which means you want it to be an odd number. So this is going to be my title page. This will be the copyright page. This will be an intro to the, the character. So that's an odd number. So I'm going to need another blank page. And then we'll start the actual book. Now that last page doesn't have to be a blank page. I mean, I can do um, you know, a dedication if I want to do that. If it's a non-children's book, then you can do a table of contents. So, okay. So here's where we go. This is where the actual meat of my story starts. And the way my book is going to go is it's in, it teaches letters. And so it's going to be very, very consistent from letter to letter to letter. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a master slide. So I'm going to click view slide master and I'm going to insert a layout. So this is our layout that we're going to use as a base. Clear all this out. Now I know from doing research on create space that they want to have a one eighth inch or 0.125 inch margin on both sides as well as the top and the bottom. Now just to be safe I go for a quarter inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map out my area for the contents of my book. So I'm going to insert shape and this doesn't have to be pretty right now because I'm going to go into size and position and I'm going to make this if I need a quarter inch on the right and the left, top and the bottom, then that means that this box needs to be eight inches by eight inches. There we go. So then now I'm just going to center this. And you can use your ruler to make sure that everything is centered. Right here. Okay, I don't want this color inside, so I'm going to put no fill. So now I just have this border. So this is where all of my content is going to be. Now the way my book is going to be set up is along the top, it's going to say certain text. At the bottom it's going to say certain text, and the image is going to be in the middle. So I'm going to create another box. I'll put it right here. That's good. Let's make this a different color. I still want it blank on the inside. Let's make this green. So that's where my text is going to go. I'll make another copy of that. 
and bring that down here so I've got the same thing for the bottom so the way it's going to be set up is text an image and then text now because the text is going to be consistent on on all the pages I can actually include that in my master my master slide so I'm going to insert my text insert a text box let's make this a little bigger and we're gonna say my buddy knows let's make it all capitalized knows that that and then this is going to be the image down here so let's center this and the best way to center it obviously you hit the center alignment but to make sure it's actually centered is I'm going to bring this all the way to the end of my box I'm going to do the same thing over here and so it's absolutely centered on the page now obviously that text is not nearly big enough and I'm going to go to home and I'm going to change the font size let's see what 54 looks like and it looks nice and bring this up okay my buddy knows that this is going to be the picture so let's just copy this text and I can use my arrow keys if, if I'd like just to bring it all the way down or I can drag it and then here I'm going to change this text to say starts with and so that's going to be my first page it's going to be my buddy knows that it's going to be an image starts with and then they're going to have to flip the page to see what letter it starts with so this is going to be the base of my first page. So now I'm going to go to View, Normal. Like I said, this is going to be the first, the actual first page of my content. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to select Layout. And I'm going to select that custom layout that we just set up. And there we go. It's all set up. Don't have to do anything else. Now I can I can copy and paste this page right here for you know, 25 more times for 26 letters of the alphabet and then I won't have to do any of this design whatsoever on each and every page because it's consistent. So let's take this and I'm going to duplicate the slide and you can either click duplicate or I can literally just hit copy and paste but for right now I'm just going to do it this way because there's going to be another page in between these two so let's just get this first one done so I'm going to click in here and I'm going to actually insert the image that's going to go in here so I need to navigate to my book my books there's letters images and obviously we're going to start with an apple There we go. And now, because I have these guidelines, this line and this line, I know exactly where to place it. Now, you need to make sure that you take the time to center everything. Just because these, you know, these are self-published books does not mean that we need to jeopardize quality. If anything, we need to be better because people already have a negative connotation when it comes to self-published books. I'm going to center this. There we go. Okay, so there we are. This is my first page. Now what my next page is going to be, and I'm going to insert a new slide. And obviously, it, and as you can see, it defaults to that layout. Don't worry, we're going to change that in a second because this is actually not going to have text up here it's going to have a giant letter a and then it's also going to, but it is going to have text down here so we need to go back and create a new layout 
Let's duplicate this layout. Save ourselves some time. All right, so this is the duplicate. Like I said, I don't need this. And I still want to keep this. So that way, when I put the letter in here, it will be the same size and centered to match the way our images are. Again, consistency is very important, especially with children's books. So then down here, um, this text is actually going to change on a page by page basis because obviously we're talking about different um, different letters. So I'm just going to keep this frame. So I know where to put my letters and where to put my image. So then now I can go back to view and I'm going to change this layout by clicking right arrow and then layout and I'm going to pick this new one. So then now I'm on this page and I'm going to insert text and obviously we're going to do a capital A and again I want this centered and I'm going to center it here I'm going to center it here I know it's not centered right now because I need to change and change the size of this font because that's clearly not big enough so we're going to go there we're going to change it to it only goes up to 96 yeah it's not big enough let's try let's try 250 see how that looks oh that's a nice size I'm not really a big fan of the of the actual font itself though this is something for children so we want to make it have a yeah there we go and obviously I could change the color if I wanted but right now I'm just gonna leave it like this I'm just gonna center it there we go and then down here we're gonna put text and remember we used 54 point font on these other pages so we want to stay consistent and we're going to say Apple starts with A. And once again, we're going to center it. There we go. So there we go. There's our first part of our book. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two pages. I don't need this one. I'm going to take these two pages right here and I'm going to duplicate them 26 times or 25 more times. And I'm just going to replace the image. So I'm going to go to this one and I'm going to replace this image. And if you click on it and you right click, you can just say change picture and it will bring you to the folder that this picture came from. So if you have all your pictures in one folder, which is a great way to set things up, you literally can just go through very quickly and replace your images. So I'm like I said, I'm going to duplicate these 25 more times. And then when we come back, it'll all be set up and I'll show you what to do after that. So stick around. Okay, we're back and I've got the book done. Uh, as you can see, this is my title page. There's my table of content. A little dedication page and then this is the this is my buddy Josh Josh knows a lot about letters and then we start right back in to the book as you can see um, I, I spice things up a little bit I, I changed the lower the capitalization to lowercase um, I changed the colors to make them more colorful than just plain black made them blue I took my buddy and I popped them up in different spots throughout the book as you can see and then at the very end we scroll all the way down we'll see that I close I did a, a close basically and said my buddy knows a lot about letters now you do too 
again, you want to make sure that, you know, try to make these books quality as well as make sure the content is quality as well. So, you know, adding an extra page here and there that will make the child engaged is definitely helpful. So, again, spiced up with some red and blue letters. And then at the very back, we do what's called a call to action. Stay tuned for more My Buddy Knows books and these the different characters from the different books. Now, what I could do, and I'll probably do before I launch this, is uh, maybe have a, a, a URL or at least my website down here. So maybe put in you know, www.kwheelerbooks.com. You can throw that down here. But this is it. As you can see for this one, for a couple of these pages, like this one and this one, um, I actually created another layout and just put the outside border. Um, I also went in and put some page numbers in, which uh, is is not difficult to do. And actually, a lot of the layouts already have page numbers built in, so you can just do that, or you can just manually go in and enter them in. So now that we have the book, obviously this is not the way you want the book to be printed. You don't want all these lines and everything. So I'm going to show you how to remove all the lines that we had set up. So I'm going to go into my master slides and I'm literally just gonna and this is a great thing about because we used the master slides instead of having to go page by page by page and remove all those lines I only have to remove them from the masters so I move it from that one that one and that one and I'm all done so I go to view, I go to normal, and that's it. They're all good. So now what you want to do, if you want to upload this to um, CreateSpace or you know all any, anything like that, typically you're going to want a PDF file, and so you'll just you'll just export. But I'm, before I do, let me just let you know, you do not want to save this version. You want to make sure that the version of your book that you have still has those outlines in case you have to go back and make changes. This way your outlines are already there. Or you can make another copy. So as long as you have one that has the outlines on it, and then if you want to create one that doesn't have one, that's fine. I don't bother storing extra files on my computer. You know, As you saw, it's very quick for me to go through and remove those outlines, so I don't worry about that. So okay, so now I'm gonna to go to X, I uh, click file, export, and I want to create a PDF. And then you just name it. And the great thing about doing it, especially in PowerPoint, is when it, when it pops up, like right now, it popped up with the PDF file. Remember, I wanted this to be an eight and a half by eight and a half. If I scroll all the way down to the bottom left hand corner, it tells me the size eight and a half by eight and a half inches. So that way I know that it's the exact right size that I wanted. So I hope that answered your questions. If you have any other questions, you can feel free to put them in the comments section below. If there's anything I didn't cover or if I went too fast, let me know. Also, you can check me out at kwheelerbooks.com. Uh, make sure if you like this content, you give me a thumbs up as well as subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get alerted each and every time I put out new content. So until next time, remember to write right.